Hi, welcome to Heart to Heart, a video series created to provide important heart and vascular information to you throughout the month of February. I'm Dr. Timothy Shin, and our first video features an interview with Dr. Elizabeth Peelsticker, Medical Director for our Heart and Vascular Service Line and the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratories. Dr. Peelsticker is an interventional cardiologist, a physician who performs procedures in people who have blocked arteries, which in many cases is an alternative to open heart surgery. Thank you, Dr. Shin, for that amazing introduction. Hi, I am Teresa Dark from Marketing Communications. And as Dr. Shin stated, uh, today with me I have Dr. Elizabeth Peel Sticker. Welcome. Thank you. Will you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Sure. I am Dr. Peel Sticker. I am an interventional cardiologist. I've been working at Henry Ford Allegiance since 2002. I'm currently the CV Service Line Director and also the Cath Lab Director. And so uh, I do heart caths and angioplasties, and I am also overseeing the, the cardiovascular service line. That's great. That's a, that's a lot of different jobs that you're juggling there. Mm -hmm. so Several different hats, yeah. Yeah, so let's go to the, um, you just said you were the medical director for the hospital's um, heart and vascular service line. Yes. And we've seen a lot of growth yes, in that have. area. Will you please explain some of the new services that we have? Sure, sure, yes. We are doing a, a, a new heart failure clinic and we're finding uh, that we're making a good impact on patients' lives and, um, and their symptoms and helping to keep them out of the hospital. Uh, we recently earned the bronze award for the American Heart Association and that was, um, was indicative of the work that we've done uh, in terms of achieving at least 85% of the metrics in terms of having uh, patients on the right meds at discharge, having good follow-up scheduled when they leave the hospital, and uh, checking their heart function. So we have um, uh, have a heart failure clinic, and we are also doing a new device called CardioMEMS, which we can insert into the pulmonary artery to measure uh, pulmonary pressures, which gives us information about patients uh, before they become symptomatic with their heart failure so that we can head off um, admissions and help patients feel better. We have um, expanded our electrophysiology clinic, so we have heart rhythm specialists, you met Dr. Shin, and, um, and we have a, a new physician as well as an APP in our electrophysiology clinic. Uh, we're offering a lot of atrial fibrillation ablations. Um, we are also offering a Watchman device, which is um, a device that allows us to uh, help patients avoid having strokes with their atrial fibrillation and potentially be able to get them off of their blood thinners. Um, we are offering uh, minimally invasive procedures as far as a, a uh, aortic valve replacement with TAVR. Um, so we've had we've had quite a bit of growth at our institution recently. Yeah, that really sounds like years. it. So you were talking about some quality measures there. These other services are they? What are they doing? Are they, do they have the same type of measurement for quality services for our patients? Sure. So so we have multiple. It's an alphabet soup of um, of agencies that monitor our quality. We participate in a lot of different registries uh, from our vascular surgeons, from our cardiac surgeons, our cath lab, our echo lab, um, cardiac rehab. Um, we are participating in the, uh, uh, the BMC Square, which is a collaborative with all the angioplasty hospitals in the state of Michigan. Um, and we are constantly improving our quality and outcomes um, in everything we do. And that takes a lot of time and effort, and it's a, a group, so it's all the doctors who are participating in that. So what are some of the things that they do to, um, that you help each other do to hold each other accountable and to grow in those areas? That's an excellent question. So uh, from, a, from a cath lab perspective, um, 
I'll speak to that first. So, so we have monthly meetings where all of the interventionalists and the cath lab staff are getting together and we're talking about cases and or articles, new articles that come out about the treatment of uh, coronary disease. Um, we're talking about any um, uh, issues that come up in the cath lab or adverse events. Um, and we're talking about our, our quality outcomes through the BMC squared and uh, through our accrediting agency, which is Corazon for our cath lab. So uh, we're doing that. There are um, uh, conferences that happen quarterly where we're looking at uh, outcomes as well. And we're discussing those between all of the cardiologists, um, not just the, the angioplasty doctors. Um, as well as um, as our APPs, so those are the things that were. So it's constant education and you know helping each other continue to gather all the best tools to be um, the best you can for our community. Correct. Yeah, we really appreciate that, and that shows. It's been uh, we've got a lot of positive comments from all the different departments on that, and so that's really amazing. You talked about being the medical director for the. Um, cardiac catheterization lab. So can you tell me um, what that entails? And then I know also that you're a doctor that performs some of these procedures. So you can explain some of that too. Correct. So, so we do um, a heart catheterization is where we are taking a look at the arteries that supply the heart with blood. So that's a left heart catheterization with a, a angiogram. So looking at the arteries. And then a right heart catheterization is where we go up through a vein to the right side of the heart to measure pressures on the right side of the heart. So um, you can have one or the other or both. Um, and it depends on the symptoms. So if someone is having uh, chest discomfort and they, they may have um, uh, typical symptoms or they may have symptoms that, that have typical or atypical features, may get a stress test, and may be referred to the cath lab for an angiogram to take a look and see if there are arteries that are blocked and restricting the flow of blood. Um, if that's the case and we think that stents are the right option, we may do a stent uh, right then and there or we may refer for a bypass. Um, and, and so those are ways of relieving a blockage and helping the blood flow and helping with symptoms. and. Um, and in certain circumstances make, uh, help people live longer and, and better lives. So you talked about symptoms and you said some heart discomfort. Is there any other kinds of symptoms that our viewers may want to be aware of? Um, Absolutely. And, and so then they know to go see their primary doctor. So uh, sudden onset of chest pain or pressure, um, uh, especially if you're experiencing sweatiness or uh, shortness of breath may radiate to the uh, one or both arms or up into the, the jaw. Um, that uh, should, um, should prompt emergency uh, help. So 911, get to the hospital. We'll be doing EKGs. The, uh, uh, the paramedics may be able to do EKGs in the field and if they see a certain type of a heart attack uh, happening, they can alert us and, uh, and get us into the cath lab before the patient even arrives at the hospital. So um, you also talked about a stint and what exactly, for our viewers, can you explain exactly what a stint is? Sure. So, so when we open up the artery in the cath lab, we usually use a balloon to help dilate the blood vessel and then a stent is a metal scaffold that's, in, that's crimped onto a balloon that we insert into the artery and then we open up the balloon, deploy the stent, de uh, release the pressure on the balloon and pull that out and then the stent stays in there and it's a metal scaffold that helps prop the artery open and helps to prevent the artery from closing back down. Um, Stents these days mostly have uh, drug coating to help prevent scar tissue from re-narrowing the area, which was a, a particular problem with stents, uh, with first generation stents that did not have a drug coating. So, uh, and more recently, uh, we are using 
intravascular ultrasound or an ultrasound unit inside the blood vessel to take a look and make sure that the stent is adequately deployed. In other words, it's up against the blood vessel wall and uh, fully expanded, and there's no evidence of uh, damage to the artery on either side of the stent. So that's another thing that we're doing to optimize our outcomes. So um, I'm hearing a progression, you're talking about new technologies and stuff because you were talking about before how you had to look at things and take care of things and now you can do stents and balloons. Is there anything else that we're doing that's new and innovative um, that you're involved with? So, um, so I am not involved with the TABR program, but we are doing the, the uh, TABR valves, which is um, typically uh, pushing the, when the aortic valve is blocked. We can use these valves to uh, go up from typically from the groin and push the uh, patient's valve out of the way and put a new valve in um, that is not restricted. Um, so that is something we have been doing over the past couple of years. Um, That's really amazing. All these things is. are amazing. And what I, you know, really like hearing is that while you're working towards all these new technologies and different things to do to help our community, you're also thinking about how important it is for the safety of our community by adhering to all these standards and pushing you and your other doctors and all the doctors together to really make this a strong program and well-rounded for our community. So that's really, really amazing. Um, thank you for being with us today. This sure. is really great. Um, also remember, we are doing our Q&A on February 24th. So if you have questions or comments, please put them in the comment section on Facebook where this will be posted. And then, uh, like I said, on the 24th, we will be answering all those questions. Thank you for joining us. And thank you again, Dr. Peel. Thank you. Thank you.